Holy Spirit, fill this place right now with your presence, Lord God, and with your almighty goodness, Lord God. May we just hear your message and know your words, Lord, that they are truth and that they are life, and you are the only way to God through the Lord Christ Jesus. So tonight, Lord God, fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit and put us on fire so that we may be able to, we may be able to go out, Lord God, and preach the gospel to our friends and to show them, Lord God, that there is only one God, one cross, and one throne in heaven and who reigns on earth, and that is you, Lord Jesus. So may we worship you tonight and may we praise your holy name in the name of the Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Alright. Okay, so today we're gonna, this is the last part of our three-part series, so part three of the Great Commission. And I've labeled this message, Elements of Evangelism. So would you please open up your bulletins, your sermon notes. Sermon, sermon notes. Okay, number one. Well, first I would like to read Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All, read with me, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Now what we see here in this first verse is that Christ did not ask us to preach the gospel to all nations. He commanded us to do it. And so, number one though, we're going to talk about the elements of how you can evangelize to your friends and what methods you can use. And I'm going to let you guys know some tips today that will get a lot of burden off of your back about this and to let you know that it is not all on your back because Christ, who is closer than a brother, is standing right next to you and pulling the load with you, right? Amen? Yes. Amen. So number one, remember... That you are not the Lord. Try and guess. Try and guess. Lord. Savior. Oh, Savior. Oh, Savior. Who are you guys? Oh. <laughs> uh, it is in Christ's hands to save and not yours. In the same way, when you think about it, a mailman. Who is in charge of delivering the message? The mailman, right? But is it his duty to write the message? Is it his duty is he responsible for how the people who receive the mail are going to react? No, it's the writer of the message that has that responsibility, right? But see, the thing is, we are messengers. We are male people, male men and male women. And so all we have to do is share this. We don't have to make up our own gospel and make up a whole itinerary of our own beliefs and systems because we have it right here, written for us in this letter, this love letter from Jesus Christ. So what you got to do first is remember, when you're sharing your faith with people, don't get so burdened and think like, oh, this is all, the weight of the world is on my shoulders. No, the weight of the world is on God's shoulders. And what we have to do is let people know that He is carrying us. That's our duty. So the thing is, we have to not think though like, oh, if it's Christ's responsibility, if God's the one, if God is the one that's going to save us, I can just sit back and relax and not share the gospel. No, the mailman, if he just says, oh, well, it's not my resp responsibility to write the message or anything, so he just stays home, the mail isn't going to be delivered. In the Bible, it says that how can people know about the gospel if it is not preached to them? And so it is our duty to spread the gospel. Number two, on your uh, pamphlets, number two, if you, read that with me, if you limit your outreach towards only the good, quote unquote, good people, you have the wrong idea. See, in the scripture, it states clearly, Jesus says, when a man comes up to him and says, good teacher, and Jesus, he's God, but he's taking, he's, taking the human role, so he says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God. See, the thing about it is this, the only person that is considered good is God himself. If you have one stain of sin on you, if you've committed one iniquity, already you are imperfect and you are no longer good. In the same way, if you have a tray, now if you have a brownie tray, okay? Yeah. You have a brownie tray. And you have manure. What? Manure is sin. 
The tray is you. If you have one, even just one drop of manure on it, would you like to eat from that tray? No. Is it a good tray? No. No, it's bad. You gotta wash it's it. It's a good tray. It's just that the dragons are good. What the? Okay. Is it a good tray to eat from? No. What are you doing? No, hence, 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 I say no. So, what it is is that once you sin, you cannot get to God yourself. But He, Jehovah Jireh, must reach. Oh, sorry, I'm throwing in Jewish stuff, but Jehovah Jireh must reach down. So let me ask you guys something. Is the Lord's arm too short? No. 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 Can I hear that again? No. One, two, three. No. Good. No. Yeah. Now you know that God's arm is not too short. Every time in the Bible, when people are complaining to God, God just has to say, is the Lord's arm too short? No. And the Jewish word that they use for arm is like the same word for mountain and is representing like a towering strength and so God is our rock and our redeemer and we don't have to worry our faith doesn't have to be shaky because we can see that God's arm can reach anybody see Jesus saves the people that we don't expect one of the greatest missionaries in the Bible was the one helping to kill the Christians that's about as worse as you can get and his name was Paul the Apostle and he wrote most of your New Testament, but God used him as a great vessel. But you see, the thing is, when you look around to save people, when you try to share the gospel or become friends with people, don't be so picky. Be open to who God wants you to be open to. And who is that? Everyone. 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 Jesus didn't walk around and just go to the religious people. Mainly he went to the poor and the sick and the lame and the blind and the wretched, the prostitutes, the drug dealers, all of those kind of people. If Jesus were on earth right now, he'd probably go straight to the alleyway and be witnessing. That's a misconception that we have a lot of times. Oh, I'll just share Jesus and you see somebody that's maybe, you know, you don't like their character or they cuss too much or they're a crackhead or they're on drugs or they're sexually active and they're really horrible. And you're looking at them like, Jesus, God can't save this person. This guy's way too far down the line. But I ask you again, is the Lord's arm too short? No! No, he can reach anyone. See, the thing about it is this. I encourage all of you to open yourself to who needs salvation, which is from the worst sinner all the way down in the pit of hell, all the way up to the hardworking, honest, good, quote-unquote, good person. Because here's the divide here. 